Hello and welcome to the Build with Bear Workshop. My name is Pepper. I'm here to build a model kit and hang out with all of you. At this time, I would invite you to throw the bear cave, the Lego, the site, the moat into chat. Let the people know you're here. Uh, and also throw them in to thank Aristofan, who has been subscribing for 34 months. Thank you so much, Aristofan. Uh, ooh, the site, the moat, for some reason, didn't show up as an emote. So I'm going to click the site, the moat. Yeah, okay. I got to re... I gotta refresh my dashboard because I don't have the site the moat working and I don't know why. But uh, Lastbrook, thank you so much. Uh, uh, he hello and welcome. Ristavan, thank you for subscribing. Lastbrook, welcome, welcome. Happy to have you here. This is the intro portion of the stream. This is the hangout. There we go. There is the site the moat. Don't know why that didn't work. Sometimes my tier two moat just stops working. It's weird. Um, but yeah, we're in the, uh, the intro portion of the stream. Uh, did I forget to sub? No, I didn't forget to sub. Um... I don't know. Uh, for a long time, it used to, internally, uh, inside the dashboard, it used to credit the person who is a subscriber uh, who owns the channel as like a tier three subscriber. And I don't know why. And eventually this made it another subscriber um, because they have to have accountability for yourself. It's, it's weird. When I used to do giveaways and I had access to everyone that was a subscriber, um, I had to uh, always like, do a random number generator and just take out the number one because I'm that's me. Uh, you're your own first subscriber when you're an affiliate, which is, yeah, you know, the, you always get somebody, hey, you know, as, as it goes. Um, hope everybody's doing, doing just fucking great out there. Uh, wait and see if you are folks want to join us. It's okay if we don't have huge numbers tonight. That's all right. Uh, I should also say that both Aristophane and Lashbrook are not currently showing up on uh, users in chat for me. So I know you're here. So if you are here, uh, besides uh, our friends who already said hello, if you'd like to say hello, just saying hi in the chat would be great. Or throwing my emotes in if you're a subscriber. If you're not a subscriber or if you don't use, feel like using the emotes, okay, you can say something else. Also, as always, you do not have to say anything. Uh Hey, Bobby's here. Welcome. Baldridge says, fine, twisting my arm here. <laughs> Baldridge, also welcome. Yeah, okay, now my viewer number has gone up a little bit. You don't see yourself either. Yeah. Um, at the very least, my numbers have increased. Because for, for a little while there, I was like, well, it doesn't say anyone's, it doesn't say that anybody's here. Oh, no. And now it, you know, it at least says that there are seven of you here, which is good. Even if that's not an accurate number. I don't care. It's a higher number than two. Bobby Desro says, I fixed it. Hell yeah. But I'm happy to have you here, um, everybody. Uh, as always, chat is optional, but uh, especially in the times where uh, I can't tell if anyone's there and it feels like I'm talking into the void, uh, I've been very blessed doing this and uh, having uh, somewhat of a built-in audience. But I will say this. Um, every stream, just about every stream, I wonder, is this the one where no one shows up? Uh, and I know I'm lucky because people do. Uh, Baldridge wants me to ring the bell. I will ring the bell. Uh, I will re redeem your channel points. Thank you for redeeming your channel points. I need to come up with more of them. I think I have my ask a question, and I have the bell, and I probably need like a third one, but I haven't gotten one. Here's the bell. There you go. Right into the microphone. Um getting a piece of gear for this microphone that will not uh, have anything to do with the stream. Because for the stream, I'm still going to be using this mount that I have here. This, uh, uh, But uh, I do, I am getting in the mail, uh, I think, I believe it's the air, um, uh, a, uh, a stand that uh, will be better for podcast recordings, like, and just placing it right in front of me where I don't have an overhead. Because if I have an overhead, I can't have something like on a stand. I have to have the arm come in. Um because that way I have freedom of movement. But when I don't need the freedom of movement, I can just place a microphone. Or if I'm playing a game with like a key with a controller, I can just place the mic right in front of me, and it'll be dead on uh, if the mic doesn't have to be adjustable. So I'm going to have that, which is going to open up some possibilities. It'll open up the possibility space, and I'll be able to talk directly into a microphone. Because I could move the microphone like this, where I was talking directly into it, but it's it's in my line of sight when I look down to build, and I don't like that at all. It's it's not good. So I want to put the microphone like this, where it's 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 pointed at me, and you can still hear me very well. But I, it's not in front of my build zone. 
the build area. Um, and also, if I have it directly in front of me, then the overhead camera is going to pick that up. And that's not good. I don't want that. Um, so we compromise this way. Um, eventually, maybe I'll get a microphone to shotgun mic that I can just attach to a monitor, point right at me, um, that I can adjust the gate and all that, and really crank it up, and then, you know, it won't show at all. But for now, this is, I'm still liking this better than having the, 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 the old headset. Uh, you know, in the earliest days, the earliest days of the Build Bear Workshop, back in the old days, the old, old days of 2017, when I first started doing this, I had a lav mic, which I thought was very cool, but required a mixing board. And why was I doing that? Uh, and then I switched to a headset and then I just kept getting better headsets. But yeah, I had a lav mic, uh, like a lapel lav mic. Um, and that was like, it wasn't a bad idea, but it wasn't a good idea, if that makes any sense. Because then, like I said, I had to have a mixer. And that was just an unnecessary tool at my disposal. Uh, all right, I'm going to retweet my tweet. Said I'm doing this thing here. Uh, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay. All right, uh, I retweeted my tweet saying that we're, go we're out here and we're building. I hope everyone's doing just fine here on a Saturday evening. Um, before we get into the building, uh, once again, I'm, I'm promoting this hard. It's not even July yet, but I want you to know that if you, you, hey, you have plans on the 16th of July now. You're going to be tuning in at 8 p.m. Eastern to twitch.tv slash packs to watch the uh, Peppers Anime Club. Yelling about the shows we love, featuring Ian Horner, Heather Derry, and myself talking about anime. Do we talk about a Gundam series? Yes. Do we talk about shows I've talked about on this stream before? Yes. Does Ian talk about a show that I've never fucking heard of? And after he talked about it, I was stunned. Literally like, what are we even doing here? Yes. Uh, I got a little loud there, so I'm going to turn myself down just a little bit. I can see myself peek in there. Uh, so I'm, I turned my mic down because I was shouting about that. Um, but yeah, Ian, Ian talked about a thing that I don't know what the fuck he... I was like, what are we doing here? So it's it's great. You should check that out. But please watch that. Uh, it's the it's the packs that's online. It's the one you can go to. And you should go to. Um, uh, working on the uh, uh, Jahanan, which is from Gundam. Reconquista in G. A.K.A. G. Reco. People call it G. Reco, and that's because... The other name is fucking hard to say. So G Reco is a lot easier. Uh, if you didn't, if you missed the end of Thursday's stream where I did the head of this, I just did the head. All I built was the head. Let me just tell you right now, folks. This is the only Gundam anime series I haven't built anything from until now. I've now built something. When we finish this kit, when we finish the Johannam, I will have built something from every Gundam anime series and several of the manga. Now, are there a couple manga out there that have uh, um, representation of model kits that I haven't built yet? I think so. But as far as anime goes, this is it. This was the it. Uh, it was uh, Gundam Age and g Reco were the only shows I hadn't built from. And now, I have, now I'm doing it. Uh, and I'm very excited about that because that is just uh makes me really happy um because yeah this is like a thing that i've been looking to do for a long time finally found the right piece the right right thing for it i should say uh e2 eight e2? here's e2 great i w couldn't find e2 for a second there at it in the wrong space and i was like where is where is this thing but yeah um look I can't tell you a lot about this. I have not seen G Reco. Can I tell you about it? I know that it was not super well received. Uh, it has its diehard fans. It has uh, some people that really, really love it, but it did not do tremendously well. Um, and I have not seen it. Will I see it someday? I don't know. I could. I don't know if I will. Um, but yeah, it, it, it seems to have not, but it does have several people that love it, two of whom are 
uh, guests of, of the show. You're kind of echoey when you're not head on the mic. So, okay, thank you for letting me know that. Let me do this. Let me be a little over it. How's that? If I'm if I'm looking down, but it's still right here, how does that sound? Is it still echoey last work? If I am if I have tilted it a little bit and brought it in a little bit, and I'm looking down, which is where I'm going to be looking because I have to look at what I'm doing. Let me know how that sounds. If that is better, uh, look to the side. Well, yeah, because if I if I'm if I'm talking like this, I know that I'm talking directly at it. But if I'm talking like this, this is how I'm probably gonna be. Um, let me know if that is too echoey uh, for your liking, as I can, you know, attempt to make some adjustments. Um, this is gonna be, uh, yeah. I mean, like I said, I'm still getting used to this new thing. Uh, I kind of want it directly on, but oh, it sounds good. Okay, good. I think it's that I have to be like the mic has to be kind of like under me a little bit, not like to the side of me because you know, um, I want you to be able to hear what I'm saying. And the, getting that um, the other uh, stand is is going to be helpful because it will be like mounted right here and you know pointed directly up at me. Because um, yeah, it's a condenser mic, so doesn't have to I don't have to be directly over it uh, so, yeah um but yeah uh G Reco is yeah like I said I, I should watch it at some point but yes uh, this was a a uh, Corey uh, Dickinson big fan of this series also Ian uh, Horner who we talked about briefly there another big fan of this series um, this is a 2014 kit and it does have just like I don't know what this wants me to do. Like, I think it's saying, put this piece on before you put that piece on. That's what I think. But yeah, uh, this is right before the changeover to include lots of English in uh, in instructions. And uh, we're just going to have to play it by ear. The very first thing it wanted me to do was apply stickers that it didn't do a good job of, in my opinion, of explaining what it wanted me to do. So that was fun, but we got we got there. We started with the head. Usually, you start with the body unit. Um, I don't. I miss this. This is nice. I think the layout of this is nice. If I've shown that of just like head unit, and here it is, and then it's body unit, and it's that thing, and then waist unit, uh, and then you know left arm, and it shows you that. I think this is very cool. Uh, the way it is laid out, you can't do that for every kit. This is a grunt, so of course you can do. A lot with a uh, with a you know it's not the most complicated kit in the world uh it's not meant to be incredibly complicated so you can play around with it quite a bit um uh but uh i like that i just think that is a cool function of what we're doing here b121 this thing here Okay, working on the neck of it. Um, but yeah, in, in my opinion, that is just like a uh, a nice benefit of this kit is the layout of what you're going to do in it, I think is just real sharp. Uh, all right, so I got a few things I want to talk to you all about today. First and foremost, I am frustrated and annoyed, um, but trying to be understanding. Uh, it was announced on um, Thursday in Japan that Friday's episode, which would have been the 24th episode out of 24, the season one, it's a double-length series, finale of the uh, the show, So I'm a Spider, So What, uh, they announced there was going to be uh, a delay, an indefinite, in, and not indefinite, probably. But they did not announce when we would get it. They didn't say a week. They didn't say when. Now, a thing that sucks about that is uh, you don't know unless you look for it. Now, eventually, like there was a news story on Crunchyroll. Uh, there was a tweet on Crunchyroll, which is more than you normally get. I will admit right now, I didn't look for it actively the day before. I didn't see it. So on Friday, around the time the show goes live, I happen to be free. And I was like, 
ooh, this is the 24th episode. I should watch this first. You know, I've got, uh, it's the only Friday show I have right now. I'm going to watch that. I'm going to go check that episode out. And I go and load it up. It's not ready. And I'm like, let me double check the time. So I like wait a little while. I refresh. It's not there. So then I'm like, okay, now I have to go to Crunchyroll's website or I have to Crunchyroll's Twitter account and look back and then find out no episode, uh, which is really frustrating because it's it's one thing if there's a delay and they say production delays. Now, I understand that that show towards the end of it has been dealing with a lot of battles that involve CGI. So it's most likely an issue with one of the studios. Um, and nobody wants delays. Nobody wants production delays. Uh, but it's frustrating because it's the 24th episode. So it's like, I wanted to watch it. We don't, I don't get to. Uh, I don't I don't get to watch it. Uh, and, you know, and now also, like I said, they didn't announce there'll be a week delay. They just said there's a delay due to production issues. And, uh, you know, is it COVID related? You have you kind of have to assume Japan is is dealing with a lot with that. Again, um, there's a, been a ramp up. Uh, could it could be a uh, an outside studio that is handling some of the CGI? It could be a Chinese studio that are just running to some issues because that has happened certainly uh, and happened quite a bit last year. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Um, but it's frustrating because I, I want to finish the season. But also, I want to be cool. I want to be chill about stuff like that. I want to be, like, feeling okay if that happens. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, if, if something, like, comes up, you know, let people handle it. Let people, like, do what they got to do. Um, we have two different colors of green here. Using black on all the green, and then we have a little bit of white in the weapons and a few other accents. So we'll be using uh, gray for that. Uh, but I, I did the, I did a test on my own time, and found that I, you know, even the light green, I was playing around with the, you know, different colors or whatever on the sprues. But yeah, when it comes to this green, both greens, black is just the way to go. If any uh, panel lining needs to happen. It's just going to look good that way. So that's what we're using. And it does look pretty damn good. Uh, I'm trying to think about other stuff that I want to talk about. Yeah, so I'm a bit frustrated about the delay on that show. Because uh, I would like to, you know, watch it. I wanted to talk about the whole thing before Wednesday. I, as it, as right now, I don't know when the next when that episode is going to come out. I'm going to have to just stay tuned. Because um, uh, Wednesday, if you don't know. Uh, here on this channel uh, at 9 p.m. Eastern for my bonus stream, my Wednesday bonus stream, I'm going to be doing my uh, summer, or sorry, my spring wrap-up slash summer preview. So I will be talking about the anime that I have been watching uh, this past season, and I will be talking about the stuff coming up in the next season. Uh, we're getting more and more announcements of what the English names of shows are going to be, which is always nice to see, and also we're starting to see Funimation has been doing some rollouts. They slow down a little bit. Crunchyroll's been really ramping up what they're talking, what's coming out, uh, which has been great because then it gives the, the names and you can kind of get information about when they're airing in Japan and where we're going to see them. Like, um, I think because the video game came out, uh, that's why Funimation is showing Scarlet Nexus like episodes. Just they're just streaming them on YouTube for a limited time. Which I think is just them being like, uh, well, it's getting, you know, reviews. People are talking about the video game. If they look up the video game on YouTube, maybe they'll come across the, the anime. Uh, because it is a mixed media thing where it is technically based on a video game, the anime. But they came out at this, they're coming out like at the same time with a lot of the same writers. Uh, there's the different, the soundtrack is different because that's usually going to be a different thing. But um, the, there's similar, like direct, the director of the video game, or the head writer of the video game also worked on the script. And so it is a, like a mixed media-ish thing. Uh, and apparently it is, hey, Jerry, welcome. Whereas in the video game, you can switch between the two main characters I believe the anime is going to focus mostly on the guy, but so it, the video game might end up being even better. 
uh, because you're getting those mixed storylines. And like, depending on who you're following, you get different things from what it sounds like. Um, but, uh, you know, as I said, this is just from what I've heard because I have not played the game, nor have I watched either of the episodes they put out because, honestly, Scarlet Nexus doesn't look good. Doesn't look like a good... Uh, it doesn't look like a good anime that I would be interested in watching. I think, for me, unfortunately, based on a video game is kind of a kiss of death unless the video game is like... If the video game is like an action RPG, then I think the anime is going to be generic and probably bad. Case in point, uh, what was the fucking name of that? I, oh, uh, Seven Knights Revolution Hero Successor was one of the most generic ass anime I've ever seen. Uh, and I was just like, yeah, no, this is not good. And yeah, I've been really bummed, uh, burned by those in the past. I think the last one I liked was, um, oh, can't remember the name of it, folks, but it was, uh, the premise was that, uh, it was like running a company that does, uh, adventuring, like an adventuring company. Um, and it was like a young man taking over for his, uh, like his father's company, um, and it was based on a video game, but it was based like on a mobile game that was like cute, kind of cute, like a builder game. So I, I never played the game, but I but it was like it wasn't a RPG that they decided to make an anime based on. So loosely based on or whatever. So I, I think I was more interested in giving that a chance than I am some other stuff that comes out. Um, what else can we say? Um, there were a lot of layoffs at the WWE. They laid off. Basically, if if you liked anyone on 205 Live, almost all of them are gone. Anyone that you saw on 205 Live, just about everybody is gone. Um, and various, and then also some NXT people that had contracts they were probably not interested in renewing uh and it's a real shame because there are some like look did i think that Rizango was going to move back up to the main roster at any point or there no but does it benefit nxt quite a bit to have seasoned people and a seasoned tag team there to help out yes i, I totally believe that that was a huge benefit to them uh and i think that they'll be missed uh, a lot of experience. A lot of very experienced uh, people were let go. Uh, and yeah. Uh, and it will be interesting to see where they end up. Uh, I forget which wrestler, but there was a wrestler who was let go before, but had ta they had taped 205 Live. And he said, uh, 205 Live's main event is ne has now be become a loser leaves town match. Um and I think that's really fucking funny. I mean, it does tell you, oh, he was going to lose that match. But, like, I love that. Like, I think that's really... I, I wish I remembered which wrestler said that on Twitter. But that was really funny. Just be like, yeah, uh, I guess I'm going to lose or lose that match. Um, the Fashion Files were some of the best stuff when I was watching WWE. Totally, Lashbrook. I mean, they did a great work. And then they pivoted real well, right? So they were playing the Fashion Files. They were playing, like, weird pseudo-cops. And they read the fucking room that... It appeared where it was like, hey, we're not going to do that anymore. So then they started doing, like, various other jobs. Like, they came in as astronauts. They were playing around with, okay, we're two people doing doing like, doing like a job. Like, we're on the clock. What, what are our jobs? And I think that was really clever and very smart and savvy of them to be like, okay, yeah, we're not doing the cop thing right now because it's 2020 and we can't do that right now or ever again. Um, but yeah, they were great and they worked really well in the ring and it, yeah, it is surprising, a real surprise. Um, there were a few people that I was like, oh, uh, and then also we can, we can chat about the, uh, the former, uh, raw writer, uh, whose biggest crime was telling the fucking truth. I will say it, it criticism. I will, I will give you cr this criticism. If you if you if you're new on a job, 
don't go on a podcast. Just don't go on podcasts. I mean, that's actually probably the best advice I can give you is don't go on podcasts. But if you're new to a job, don't go on a podcast. Now, did she go on a wrestling podcast? No. Did she go on a huge podcast that everybody's heard of? No. Is it very evident that the reason that people know she was on this podcast is because when anyone is hired for WWE, uh, there are a lot of people out there who think they shouldn't have been hired because the they think they should have been hired. Very true. Uh, is it particularly true that women of color uh, and women in general are also heavily looked at and investigated when they find out they get a job because there's the belief that, well, they don't care about wrestling and they don't, they don't get it like I do? Very much so. Is it true that WWE fucking knows when they hire people who don't care about wrestling? Yes. Here's the thing about WWE. For better or worse, uh, if you, if ever, you were applying for a job at WWE that was not a creative job, if you want to be in the IT department at, in Stanford, uh, if you want to work on Peacock directly under WWE people, um, if you want to be on the sales team for local ads, you know, when they're, on, when they're traveling again, if you want to do any of that stuff, here's my big advice for you. Don't let them know you like wrestling because they don't want to hire wrestling fans. Now, I know some people think that is terrible. They're going to hire this, what, TV comedy writer, the stand-up? They're going to hire the stand-up? Well, they don't know about wrestling. Like, yeah, they can learn about wrestling, but wrestling fans can't learn how to become good writers. Um, the thing that I have uh, said a lot is, you know, you can learn the basics of improv, but you can't just be a funny improv comedian. Like you got, you, you know, like you got to like work really hard at it. But um, if you can write for TV, you can write a wrestling storyline because guess what? It's not like you're telling them the moves they need to do. You're just like pitching scenarios. You're pitching opponents. You're pitching things. Also, if you're a first time writer, if you're part of the first week at the WWE, uh, you're not writing for Bobby Lashley. You're not writing for the champion. doesn't matter. You don't need to know the champion's name because you're not writing for him. You're pitching ideas for, hey, we got this character. Uh, they want to do this gimmick. Like, at best, maybe they're like, hey, you've written for TV. We got this, like, Nikki Cross gimmick. She's going to be a superhero now. What do you think? Like that's like at best she's writing for for Nikki Cross. She's not writing for anybody big because she's new. Uh, and so I, I said pretty much that on uh, Twitter. And I uh, I heard from people who don't follow me, who uh, were searching for her name so they could argue with people online. And that was my general response to a lot of people was just like, you know, like oh you're making this about race and you're making this about so it's none of that stuff blah, blah blah. And I'm like. And you are searching for this woman's name on Twitter so you can argue with strangers. And you have options. All I did was say, out, put out there my opinion, which is, seems like she got a real raw deal. Um, and uh, one of my favorite things is people are like, if you didn't know who Seinfeld was, you they wouldn't hire you to write for it, for the show. And I'm like, one, that's your television reference to Seinfeld. And two... You don't understand how television works because, of course, they will. There are people who get hired to write on TV shows who don't know who the lead are. That happens all the time. It 100% does. 100% does. There are people who are hired to write for late night television that have never watched an episode. That maybe, maybe they don't even know Seth Meyers was on SNL. Like, whatever, I wasn't watching SNL then. But my packet is really funny. So I got hired. So like, whatever. Like it is, it is, it is very clear that a lot of people who are like, you got to know and love the product. It's like, no, you don't. You got to be funny or creative or interesting. That's why you get hired. She got hired because she's funny. She can punch some stuff up. Probably wrote, probably her, her packet probably had some bits that somebody really liked and thought were really clever and interesting. 
Maybe they thought she could uh, pitch stuff to the new day. Or she could pitch stuff to, you know, any writer, anybody that, like, punch some jokes up for people that they don't think are particularly funny. There's any number of reasons why they hired her. Uh, and they knew what they were getting. Now, if you want to argue that WWE should hire fans, well, my argument to you is um, wrestling fans are awful in general. So they shouldn't hire wrestling fans because they're bad news. Um, just some real garbage out there in uh, in the wrestling fandom. Uh, so, yeah, don't hire those people. Uh, just be grateful that you're not running into them. Uh, let's see here. Got some stickers here. Put on. Yep. On there. We got ourselves some stickers. Anyway, I was just made me mad uh, that people just, people were talking a lot of stuff that they don't know anything about. But, yeah. Um... It's not a secret. Uh, you could be like, "Yeah, I don't know who I don't know who Jerry Seinfeld is," and you could write for Seinfeld because somebody liked your packet and was like, "Okay, sure." You think every single writer on every television show fully knows every little minutia about the product that they're the thing they're writing for? No, they don't know everything. Sometimes they don't know anything. Because they don't have to. Because they'll learn on the job. Hired because they're a super fan. And as I said, WWE doesn't want to hire fans. Um, so there was a, a couple of interviews with the whole department of uh, of their movie and television production arm uh, that worked on licensing and worked on producing things. That whole department got laid off. And one of the guys from it has done some podcasts and he's been all around and talking to people. Um, and he was the fan in, in the group. So they would, they'd be like, hey, you know, there's this movie coming out. Who should we get for it? Who, who should we push? They want a couple wrestlers to do wrestling roles. Hey, who, who would be good for this? Hey, do you know what's going on with the storyline? Hey, why did Kofi lose? What's going on with that? And he would he'd be the guy to explain to his coworkers what was going on because he paid attention to the product. And it was very clear that like, he didn't really let on that he knew what he was what was going on at first to to get the job because that was not something that they were looking for. They're looking for are you good at being a lawyer, uh, an entertainment lawyer? Before they're looking for are you a WWE fan? It's very clear. Yeah, people just don't know what what it, what it means to do that. And again, I will say as talking about all this. The most one of the big things to take away from her is I admit um, that it's fucking sucks that if you are uh, a, a person of color, a woman of color, um, that you have to really like be like very like don't say anything, don't let anybody know you're working there, don't let anybody know what your phantom is because like. There's another writer who's been getting harassed. She just started NXT. I happen to know her. Her name is Millie. She's fucking incredibly funny. Um, she's a huge wrestling fan. Loves it. Gets it. Knows what's going on. Knows all the names. Follows the product. Uh, she's still getting harassment because she's also an outspoken feminist and an outspoken woman of color and worked for... And because she's... One of her big writing credits is like working on uh people's color led or and uh um like uh satire magazines so like of course people are going to see that not understand what satire is and just think that you know she doesn't know what she's talking about or is what a blow or this or that or whatever uh just totally missed the point uh but she's been you know she won't she put making her account private and Try to try to distance herself from a lot of bullshit because it's completely sucks. There's a lot of people who are just they've never applied for anything that they wanted in their life and they don't understand how anyone gets anything that they would that they wanted. And because they because wrestling is incredibly embarrassing, uh, they're mad that people who don't love it 
get jobs in it because they because they've suffered for their fandom so they don't think other people should be rewarded who haven't suffered like they have uh which is bullshit and doesn't make any sense and it is a hard pill to swallow that the thing you like doesn't like the people that make the thing you like don't care about you and also don't like the thing that they make. It is incredibly, they're embarrassed by it. No one is more embarrassed about wrestling than WWE, the biggest wrestling company in the world. Uh, and it is fucking, it is a hard pill to swallow to understand that and admit that to yourself. No, yeah, you love it so much more than they do and they hate you for loving it. Very depressing. Uh, anyway, I hope everyone's staying cool out there. I know that it is uh, it's rough, particularly for folks on the uh, the West Coast. I know that this particularly uh, is a rough time of uh, of the year here. You got heat waves coming in. I hope everyone's doing okay. I got air conditioning. I got sweet ass air conditioning out here. Um, my friend, one of my friends out there in Seattle area. Got air conditioning. I'm very happy for her uh, so that she can live uh, as it just becomes brutal. I hope you're all staying as cool as you can out there. Uh, you know, if you're in an affected area, listen to the what people are saying about cooling centers. And uh, I hope that you don't have any brownouts and you keep having power and you can stay as cool as you can. Uh, these are not the right pieces. I just panel line these pieces. When they're not the pieces I was supposed to take out. So that's where I'm at. Uh, I got to step ahead when I have to take out pieces. I don't know what those were. Got AC here. Very fortunate. Hell yeah, Risk fan. Glad to hear it. Um, but yeah, it can be brutal. Look, I don't know how I lived through that air conditioning up in uh, New York. I don't know. I don't know how I, dealt. I did it, but I did. For many years, we had some big heat waves come through. And I managed to be okay. Hey, Harold, welcome, welcome. Happy to have you here, my friend. Hope you're uh, staying cool down there in Florida. Uh, but yeah, I am. Um, yeah, I don't know how people. I don't know how I survived some brutal uh, New York summers without air conditioning. But I did. But now I don't know if I could ever go back. Uh, I've never been one to see wrestling or being interested in wrestling as someone to be embarrassed about. It's something on par with daytime soaps to me, but uh, with more acrobatics. Yeah, I mean, look, so there are times where wrestling is incredibly embarrassing and being a wrestling fan feels bad uh, because in uh, AC, yes, totally. Um, because uh, in um, so the th a thing about wrestling is that it is an easy butt of the joke. It is an easy thing. It used to be um, the thing that you would say, like akin to saying, I like comic books. And now it's still dorky to like comic books, but you can say like, oh, I like Marvel stuff. And people might think you mean the movies or the TV shows and not the comic books um, because there's still very few people that read comic books, honestly, compared to other things. Um, but, uh, but it used to be kind of like that. But it now is the thing where you're just like, it is a thing that is okay to be like, you, you, you like wrestling, huh? Didn't, don't you know that shit's fake? Like that's the still a thing that people constantly deal with, which is frustrating uh, as someone that likes it. Um, but also sometimes that shit is corny as hell and not great. And it's okay to feel that way, uh, but still like a lot of it. Um, but the people that... So being a wrestling fan, unfortunately, is a personality. Um, it's not one, but it's perceived to be a personality trait. Um, in the same way, there are a lot of things out there, right, that are just like, oh, no, uh, your self-martyrdom for your hobby is, is not a personality. Uh, same thing with gamers, you know, gamers with the Z, uh, a capital G gamer. Um, uh, those folks, comic book fans, uh, uh, anime fans, uh, any, any kind of fandom has those fans with a capital F, and wrestling has them as well. Uh, as a former wrestling fan, I was regularly embarrassed about it, mostly because of the behavior of other wrestling fans. Yeah, that's also the thing. Like, 
I, I, I will never forget uh, going to a Ring of Honor show. Ring of Honor is, at the time, was certainly this time, was like, you know, they there was WWE and then like TNA Impact was like the next big American company. And then Ring of Honor was like an indie. They didn't have, they, you know, they had a little bit of TV deals. They had some pay-per-views, but they were like indies. So the Ring of Honor folks weren't like booing WWE. They were booing Impact because they saw Impact as their competitors. And I was just like, you guys hate Impact? What the fuck? Who the hell cares about that? Like, what do you, it's like, it's like one, it's like being like, having a it's like well we don't have a rivalry with wwe because they don't even know we exist so we have a rival with this other company it's like well who cares i don't know it was it was always a thing where i was like nobody nobody cares about so it's it's important to set realistic goals i guess so but i always just love that i'm like wait that's who you have a rivalry with sure okay fans and it wasn't like the company it was just fucking fans fans decided that that you know they hated that because sometimes people would leave Ring of Honor to go to TNA. And you're like, oh, okay. It's always just very, like, yeah, chanting TNA sucks. And I was just like, yo, come on. Nobody gives a shit. Just, do, just be better. But yeah, wrestling fans are, unfortunately, incredibly embarrassing. Uh, for other wrestling fans. Uh, but yeah, what are you going to do? I still like I still like the product out there i still like the people that do it i still think you get cool shit because you get really interesting storylines and very accomplished athletic pursuits uh and cool weird shit that you can't get other places and people that work their bust their ass to work really hard to make cool shit happen and i really appreciate the hard work that everyone puts into it um but then also sometimes it's embarrassing as fucking hell uh and hard to, to watch and hard to recommend and hard to appreciate. And then like some stuff happens and people are like, hey, what what's up? I'm seeing gifts of this thing. What's going on with that? And you're like, okay, well, there's a really cool thing happening on SmackDown. Now you have to watch other bunch of bullshit that sucks ass. But this other thing that's happening is really cool. And it's it can be very frustrating to have to, to like put caveats in place for all of the things that you like. To be like, uh, I've watched some of it over the years, but I haven't paid much attention since the last uh, the Von Erics left the ring. Okay, yeah, dirty. I mean, you know, but it's the thing, like, right? Like, so like, they'll be like, New Day is doing this thing, and you're just like, well, the New Day looks great, uh, or you maybe you're just like coming in because you're just like, hey, because I, I people ask me, they're like, hey, what's up with Rhea Ripley, and I'm like. I'll tell you what's up with her. And people were like, okay. So should I watch her? And it was like, I mean, she's very good at what she does. But like, I don't know. You can if you want to. Here's the storyline she's in right now. I don't think it's good. But you can check that out. And you're like, okay. Uh, but yeah, I get people who like ask me about wrestlers here and there. So it's like, Hey, welcome words. Maybe they're like, yeah, what's going on with this thing? Hey, what's going on with this wrestler? You know, it's like, uh, you know, Laps fans are like, hey, Ray Mysterio's son is a wrestler now? And he's like, yeah, Dominic. He should be way better than he is. And you're like, what? And you're like, yeah. Dominic Mysterio is an okay wrestler, but because he's the son of Ray Mysterio and wrestling in, ta in a tag team with Ray Mysterio, he should be incredible, and he is not. And it's weird that he is not the best. He's not the second coming. And you're like, oh, that's that's a shame. They probably shouldn't have put, up, put him on TV yet, but they put him on TV so that Ray wouldn't sign with another company when his, when his contract was expiring. They wanted to keep Ray Mysterio, and I get that. But, like, yikes. Dominic Mysterio is not the best wrestler in the world. Uh, he's growing. It's just that he's doing it on SmackDown in high-profile wrestling matches. And you're just like, mm, I don't know. I don't know about that, Dom. Um, uh, all right, we're putting stickers on here. Um, but yeah, it, it can be pretty embarrassing to be a, a wrestling fan, unfortunately. Uh, but it is like any other fandom. Uh, you know, 
I mean, and I'm in a bunch of fandoms, so I know. Uh, you just look for good people that are talking about stuff like uh, if you ever want to listen to a wrestling podcast, the my the wrestling podcast I always recommend to people is Tights and Fights. It is on the Maximum Fun Network. Uh, uh, Max Fun is a Max Fun show. Uh, it has great hosts who care about wrestling. They're knowledgeable about wrestling. They do the work uh, and care about social issues around it and are thoughtful about it and funny because uh, two of them are comedians uh, and one of them is just a funny person. Um, and that goes a long way. Hey, uh, Dominic is now hosting the stream. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Uh, yo to you as well. Welcome. Working on a model kit from G Reco. On Gista in G, uh, which is uh, my first kit in this uh, from this show, and the last of the Gundam anime for me to actually uh, work on a kit. I have built a kit from every other Gundam series at this point now, uh, which you know I probably could have done sooner. I cer cer ugh, certainly could have done it sooner, but I didn't. I didn't get around to this or. Uh, building something from uh, Gundam Age until la until this year. Uh, it snuck up on me the the realization that I had built from every series except these two. Uh, really, just caught me off guard. Uh, but luckily, I'm not running out of model kits to build because they keep making model kits. Now, do they make enough of them that aren't premium uh, in 2021? I would say no. I would say they need to make more just regular ass Gundams that I can just purchase uh, or pre order uh, on other websites, but lots of premium stuff this year. It makes sense. They're a company. They got to make money. I get it. I just don't want to pre order a lot of shit. Right now, I. <laughs> oh no. I, I don't want to kind of want to look at my pre order list. Uh, my pre order list is. Six model kits coming between now and January of next year. Um, uh, five of the six are Gundams, or, you know, uh, Bandai Gunpla. Uh, and one of them is the Millennium Puzzle coming in August. Uh, but yeah, it was just like, oh no, I have pre-ordered. I got six kits on pre-order. Uh, one's coming sometime in July. It looks like... The uh, Calamity Gundam, the Full Mechanics Calamity, isn't making uh, the a June date. It'll be a July date, which is fine. Uh, but I do want to build that very soon. So I think that comes real, real soon. Uh, regular ass Gundam calling this function to to, to to Nami. Yeah, indeed. You gotta you gotta watch your regular ass Gundams. But yeah, no, you know what I mean. I just I don't need the premium. I don't need always the premium stuff. Sometimes I just want like just like a high grade or a master, maybe a master grade. Uh, I need to get around to pre-ordering the Millennium Puzzle. Indeed, I believe that comes out in August. Uh, that was a immediate pre-order. As soon as pre-orders went out, I started seeing them. Pre-ordered that from USA Gundam Store, whom I are my pre-order place of choice. Occasionally, I have gotten something after other people get them. Um, I used to use uh, uh, Gundam Planet was my primary uh, place to pre-order because they are out of New Jersey. When I was living in New York, it was really nice. And also, because they're in New Jersey, they would get stuff very quickly and send it out very quickly. But since I am currently in uh, South Carolina, having a Florida-based uh, place is, you know, it's nice. To, I, I still get stuff pretty fast. So I go with that. All right, we got the shoulder done. We're working on the left arm of this kit. Uh, we will take a pause for the cause in a moment or two, talk about ways you can support the channel, do all that shenanigans. Um, uh, you know, let me plug my stuff, and then uh, we'll get back to, to building it. Also talk about uh, the anime. We are now at the point where I'm going to... Uh, shows that I've been watching week to week are wrapping up. So I'll be giving my final thoughts on... Uh, one show, which is uh, I've been killing slimes for 300 years and maxed out my level. We get the final episode of that. And then I always talk about an ongoing show that's a double length, so we still got episodes. And then I'll talk about a show that I watched that I, I didn't talk about weekly because I was just savoring it. 
because uh, I uh, I pick a couple shows every season that I don't watch. Um, you know, like I I, I kind of let episodes build up and then kind of marathon through them, or I don't watch them the day they come out uh, and just kind of catch them whenever. Uh, and I'm not. And sometimes I'm like, oh, I missed an episode, that kind of thing. Um, because uh, I think that's nice. Oh man, mentioning the Von Erics made me go look at their wiki entry and I'd forgotten how tragic that family was. Yeah, dirty. Yeah. Oh, uh, the Von Erics had a, a lot of bad luck. They had a lot of self-imposed problems. They did a, they did quite a bit to the family uh, and the pressures of being that kind of family and their own they're all of their own fucking demons. Uh, and it's a, it's a fucking tragedy. Goddamn tragedy. Uh, the folks that had weird accidents, the folks that had, uh, life-changing alter, alter, altercations that, like, really affected them, uh, the pressures they put on themselves, the pressures they put on, uh, the, the youngest, uh, who never should have been in the business and, clearly was struggling and all of the von Eriks like needed to recognize the struggles that each other were going through and didn't and that's easy to say with hindsight but fuck that's a goddamn tragedy and all those boys uh, yeah just a nightmare uh, and I laugh because it's sad I'm not laughing because I think it's funny because I don't know another way to deal with it. Uh, yeah. Ooh. All right. Uh, we're going to get a little bit of this arm done, and then we'll take a pause for the cause here. So we'll get this going. We need this to be... How does that look? Oh, look out here. Ah, Crimson Daggerfall is now following. Thank you for the follow, Crimson Daggerfall. You got the name of a RPG that is somebody's favorite RPG. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah, you know, I used to play a lot of that. And, of course, you know, I always played, uh, you know, one of my favorites is, of course, uh, Crimson Daggerfall. You know, like. Oh, you didn't you didn't play that? Oh, it's the best PS2 RPG you would ever played. I love the Tales games, Crimson Dagger Fall, Icewind Dale, you know, the classics. So, and then somebody's just like, I don't know. Uh, also, they were from my hometown. I forgot about that, too. Oh, yeah, Dirty. Jeez, yeah. You can talk to some older folks. We'll know all about them. We'll remember. Uh, I played Elder Scrolls games. Yes, there you go. Yes, indeed. Yeah, Morrowind. You play, you play enough Morrowind. Uh, all right, so we're gonna put this on here. We will, we will of course panel line this in a moment, because you gotta panel line your model kits. You got, you got your pieces as we build. We could wait till the end, but better do that. We're getting a lot done with this arm though, which is good. So it's gonna go like that, and then we'll build the hand. Uh, this is a very 2014. Like you can build the palm hand. Or you can build the fist hand. Those are your options. It's high grade from 2014. Uh, your father... Sorry, Thomas Hayden Church's father was your history teacher. Well, there you go. Uh, I'm not on my town's uh, Wikipedia page as a... Because uh, my high school doesn't have a Wikipedia page, so I'm not on that. But I'm not on my town's Wikipedia page, my hometown. Uh, which is annoying because the people they list there are like went to Hawaii is part of the military and it's like the Navy and it's just like okay it's like cool I've been on television I'm a I've been I've made a couple appearances on late night television put me put me on that page thanks a lot <laughs> uh I actually don't care that much but it is a little annoying that i'm not on my like i'm not on my alumni section of my town because i'm just like there is nobody famous from this town like myself and chris kohler should be listed on there chris definitely should be listed on there 
He's got he's got his name in liner notes on Final Fantasy music collections. He's written books. He's a published author. Those books are about video games and one's about trivia, but he is a published author, physical book published author. Like, come on. He wrote for Wired.com for a number of years. He, Chris Kohler should definitely be on our town's famous alumni page. Uh, anyway, that's not, that's not what I'm going to talk about right now. Right now I'm going to talk about ways you can support the channel because i got to reach for my keyboard. Sorry, i got to sign my keyboard here. Um, this is the pause for the cause. This is an opportunity for me to plug some stuff that I do and in, to attempt to encourage you to support me financially. Uh, you are under no obligation to do anything here. If you came for model kit building and you're like, Pat, you have stopped building a model kit so you can talk to us, what's happening? I'll get back to the model kits. I always get back to the model kits, but once a stream in the middle, I like to talk about ways you can support what I do. So this is, this is your opportunity to do that. Uh, I'm going to throw the barricade, the Lego, the site, the moat in the chat. If you're currently a subscriber, you can apply with those emotes. Let the people know uh, that is an easy way to support what I do is uh, via um, uh, subscribing. Uh, if you have Amazon Prime, you can you link it with your Twitch. You get the Twitch Prime token. You can use that on me. Some people are Prime and they have to do it every month, which is fun. If you've been gifted a sub, you could convert that to a regular subscription. You could do that at any time. Uh, and they don't charge you until your gift is sub. Uh, the gift to sub has concluded and then they charge you and then you're a regular subscriber. Uh, you could gift a sub. You could join the gift sub leaderboard with a wristband and silver and air, uh, which is always appreciated. Um, uh, again, you don't have to do that, but you could. It's nice. You could definitely do that. Um, uh, uh, bits and coins, always appreciated. You got Harold and Frosty doing bits and coins. Oh, always appreciate those. Um, <clears throat> Sorry, I'm gonna drink a little water before I continue. Throat's a little dry. And now I'm gonna tell you other ways you can support what I do, which is you can join my Patreon. I have a Patreon. It is uh, there's a one dollar, three dollar, five dollar, and a ten dollar tier. If you join today, you would get a Q and A video that you could watch that I posted today. Because every month I post a Q and A video for my patreon and nobody else sees it except patreon supporters which is you know just a little thing i can do um uh if you're watching this later on youtube what's up to youtube you can find all of these links in the show description below the video uh and also i have a youtube you can join that youtube.com slash pat bear and you can also join there and you can become a member i offer memberships it's two dollars a month uh, when I get AdSense money, when I get Patreon money, when I get Twitch money, that goes into buying model kits and equipment along with direct donations. Um, if you are thinking like, oh, Pat, your birthday was Wednesday. I didn't get you anything. You don't have to, but if you wanted to, you could get me money and I will use that to buy model kits to build on stream. Uh, but yeah, everything goes back into doing that. Speaking of buying model kits, a couple of people bought some model kits. Uh, my next kit that I will be building uh, is going to be for my Amazon wish list. It'll either be um, uh, either uh, uh, a Lego set or a model kit because I got two of those in the mail. My ten dollars patrons are currently deciding what I'm building next, uh, but I, they both came from my Amazon wish list. And you could buy something like that. I will shoot a video about the thing you bought. Um, I and it will jump the queue because I have stuff in my backlog. I got a high grade. I got some master grade or I got a bunch of high grades, some master grades, a Lego set. I'm not building any of those. The next two things I, one of the next two things I build comes from the wish list. Um, uh, so I have Lego. I've got some Haro stuff. I've got some high grades, some master grades, uh, inexpensive kits, very expensive kits, kits that go on sale often, kits that are never on sale and also don't don't have prime shipping. And you got to pay extra for shipping. Uh, also, at the bottom of the page, I have some gear because it's always fun to have a little bit of gear out there. Um, and because uh, some people don't know what to buy and they're like, Pat, I have no idea what to get you. And I'm like, will you get me one of these things? Uh, and uh, so, yeah, you could you could pick up something like that. As I said, I would shoot a video about the thing that you bought. Uh, I'm looking forward to building uh, either ne directly next, because again, I don't know, uh, either working on a Lego Cars uh, set uh, or uh, two, two Dodges uh, or building a Gundam. 
uh, from Double or the Gundam Dolo Diver from Gundam Build Divers, which has its GN drives on the shoulders, which is nonsense in a way that I really like. Um, alternative to uh, a way to support me without buying anything from Amazon, because I understand some people are like, no thanks to Amazon. You go to USA Gundam Store, you buy a gift card there, they send you a code in your email. You get a DM, and you DM me on Twitter and go like, hey, here's this code. Then I'll buy that thing for you, or from you. Use your code on USA Gun and Star. I'll pick up something cool. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you about? Uh, if you want to support me and not spend any money, because I get it, I'm just some guy. And also money, you know, you want to spend money on goods and services that directly support you. But for free, you could join my Discord. My Discord is very chill and nice. Uh, uh, and uh, you could uh, come hang out there. Um, and is he a very chill, nice little community? So you can hang out with some friends there. We'll get back to building in just a moment. A couple of video clips I would like to send you is Pat Bear's Anime Club. Uh, because it is Pride still this month, I was talking about some queer anime and some anime representation that I think does a fantastic job in the latest Pat Bear's Anime Club. Uh, so check that out because I don't know, I'm proud of that one. I think it turned out great. Um, and then Bear With Me is an ongoing video series. Every Wednesday I put a new episode out where I take a look at something uh, from the world of, uh, just the world on the internet and give an honest, genuine reaction to it, an in-the-moment reaction. Uh, so this this one, somebody modified a computer fan to do some weird stuff, and it uh, honestly scared me, and I was scared for the person who made it. Uh, so you can watch my reaction to that video. I think it's pretty fun. Uh, all right, so I'm going to drink some more water. I'm going to get ready to talk about the, some anime. Uh, and we're going to keep working on this g Reco kit. So let me get that together. Uh, let me get this together. Uh, okay, so I want to do that. And I want to put this here. Great, now I can look at some anime. Converse, I can read some anime stuff while I am talking to all of you about other things. We did it. And then I'll go back here. That's where I need to be. So, cause we're still working on the arm here. Okay. So I'm going to talk to you about, uh, three shows. Uh, one that I have, uh, that I've got caught up on one that I just finished and one that is an ongoing. So we'll start with the first one, which is I've been killing slimes for 300 years and maxed out my level. This was the 12th episode, so it was the last episode of the season. Uh, this show is just the fucking cutest. Um, it is, if you have not, the the uh, the, the easy sell story uh, that I can tell you is uh, Azusa is a girl. Uh, she was a girl on Earth who worked... Uh, just worked herself to the bone. She just worked dead tired, collapsed and died, uh, was given the chance to start a new life um, and wanted to live the slow life. She wanted to be an immortal witch and so that she didn't have to deal with anything. And so she, for 300 years, she just killed slimes every day to have enough money to go in and, uh, and get food. And she just kind of lived the life so she just did that she made a little bit of money here and there she didn't really bother herself there was a town that she, near her she helped out on occasion but she kind of just kept to herself and just went about her day 300 years later uh she finds out she's maxed her level she's now the strongest human on the planet uh this fantasy world and that draws the attention of people because they want to test their might against the strongest you know person in, in the world uh because of that she runs into a uh, a dragon that she bests and the dragon's like let me stay here and learn from you she's like uh i mean okay uh then comes along two young ladies who are the spirits of slimes but they are in human form uh that uh call her their mother and she's like uh okay sure yes sure um, and then an elf comes around that she helps and she's like, sure, you can live here too, I guess. And then, um, 
a ghost, a teen ghost, wants to wants to live there, and it's like, sure, we're, you live here. Now. Then another dragon moves in. It's the whole, it's, it, and it's just, it is an isekai. It is a slow paced, cutie, cute, lovely little isekai uh, about found family, and it is just adorable, and all the characters are great uh, and fun. Uh, my favorite minor character is Rosalie, the ghost, teen ghost with the, uh, with like, uh, she's got like the voice of a delinquent. Um, uh, she is great because uh, she's just real positive and cool. Um, I just think she's awesome. Uh, oh, yeah, also there's a demon. Uh, there's the demon king, uh, who is a cute looking young lady. And then also uh, there's a high ranking demon named Beelzebub. Uh, who definitely takes a liking to the group. She doesn't live with them, but she takes a liking to them and helps them out quite a bit because she is a high-ranking demon lord. Or a uh, high-ranking demon. Uh, all right, we finished this arm. This arm is done. We can just go ahead and pop that on. Look at that. We got an arm done while I'm talking. Okay, so this episode was... It was the 12th episode. So uh, a festival is starting up in the nearby town. And in years past... Uh, Azusa didn't get involved in the festival because she just assumed that, it, you know, because she was alive before it even started, she's like, well, the problem is I don't want to get involved in it. I don't want to, like, worship me. I don't want to become part of the festival. Uh, I don't want to be, like, the tradition that I do stuff. But all the, you know, all the people that live with her are thinking it might be fun to do something. So she's like, okay, well, let's do, like, a coffee house. We'll, like, serve food and drinks and just kind of do that. That'll be our thing. We'll do that one day as part of it. Uh, cause it'll be fun to do something with the whole family. Um, so they get like waitress outfits for everybody. They have to do a spell. So the Rosalie can wear one, which is a callback to something that happened earlier uh, in the show, which was a fun little callback to that. Um, everyone wants to help out and they're like, Okay, well, here's the menu I would like to do, and here's what I would like to do, and I'll help decorate. And Rosalie is a fucking champion because she can just use her ghost powers to move stuff around. Uh, so, she, you know, like, that's very helpful. She's very helpful. Everybody's being very helpful. Um, and, of course, it's a huge success because Azusa is, like, considered the guardian of the town. So, of course, and also... Everybody that's there is real cute. So, like, of course, like, people want to go to them. And they're all dressed, like, you know, it's basically a maid cafe. So, of course, everybody's, like, fucking psyched about going there. It's too successful. Oh, no. Uh, Beelzebub shows up, and she's like, hey, don't I tell you to invite me to fun things? You only summon me when you have a problem. She's like, I'm sorry about that. Also, will you please help? And then, uh, of course, even though she's grumpy about it immediately she had her own outfit uh beelzebub hells out because she's a little sundere um the demon lord shows up and she's of course really moe and cute and helps out and uh her assistants her attendants the leviathans help out uh and, which is great and everybody kind of pitches in including minor characters that we've only seen like once or twice like the uh the martial arts slime and Eno the witch and Cuckoo the 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 bunny girl who is also the like idol, uh, they all show up to help out, and it is really cute. And then the last ep end of the episode is her like is also like thinking about all the good stuff that's happened once she led it and how her life is 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 more exciting, but it's still slow and fun. Um, and then they all talk about going to the dance festival. Uh, going dancing and what all their dances are going to be. And it's just cute. It's a cute show. It's adorable. Um, this episode was based on it, uh, uh, partially based on the manga. Um, the, it's very close to the, the source material because that I've read the source material. Um, but this was an early episode, uh, or sorry, early chapter in the manga uh, it was adopted from. Um, which they kind of skipped over, which makes sense. It's like it's a fun way to end. So the anime then just put in a bunch of the characters that weren't in uh, the uh, that part of the uh, manga because they hadn't been introduced yet. So they just kind of added them in. So it's a little bit of a creative liberties with the anime, but I don't fault them for it because I think it does it does make it fun. It's like oh they're there, that's neat. Um, 
So it's overall very cute, uh, a solid episode, a solid series. If you are like, if you liked by the grace of the gods, if that style of isekai where it's just kind of like, yeah, it's an isekai, but it's mostly just like people being chill and like going about their business and like on cute characters in this world, and it's a little slice of lifey, but fantasy slice of lifey. Uh, or lifestyle. Uh, then I've been killing slimes for 300 years, and finally, it maxed out my level. Uh, is a great show that I recommend. It's just cute and fun. Um, so yeah, I would check that out. Um, okay, so I'm going to tell you about Welcome to Demon School Irima Kun, which is an isekai, but it's a comedy isekai. It is about a young man named Irima who has. Uh, he was sold to uh, one of the great demons and who he just wants a grandson because we found out later that his two other rivals both have grandchildren. So he was like, I want a grandson. So he's like, OK, well, Irma, you're going to go to school in the but don't tell anyone that you're a human because they would freak out. None of them have met a human uh, and some of them don't believe you're real, but they definitely have been told that you'd be tasty. So. Uh, so Irma has like trying to keep his trying to keep the secret that he is a human boy living in a in a in the demon realm, and he's got friends and he's got a bunch of stuff happening. He also is apparently very bad at taking tests, and that's where we're at here in uh, right now in this. Uh, we just finishing up a chapter, or sorry, like an arc of the show was him studying the whole group because he's in the misfit class. They're all studying. None of them want to go to summer school. They all want to like have fun in the summer. Um, and Irma is like very bad at taking tests because he never really went to school uh, in the human realm. And also, he doesn't know common sense shit about demons because he's not a demon. So there's a lot of stuff he just doesn't know about. Um, anyway, he did well on the test. Everyone passed. No one's going to supplemental classes. Uh, and no one is losing a rank. And in fact, some of them, uh, the guys who, by doing a passing grade, they raise their rank. Uh, quite a few of them r raise their rank, uh, uh, which is awesome. Uh, Irma uh, goes to talk to the teacher who knows his secret, Bellum. Uh, Bellum is a big scary monster, like legit, like frightens other demons. But all, hey, what's this? He got himself a haircut because he's trying to be less, he's trying to be more presentable to people and scare less people, which is cute. He's still scary. But it's different. Um, he's trying. Um, we find out later that Balam is a top-ranked demon. He's one of only two top ranks in the school. And uh, he has the uh, ability to tell when people are lying or deceiving. Because we had a thing where um, uh, he knows that people are cheating. Which is why no one, since he started teaching there, has ever been able to cheat on an exam. Which is interesting. Uh so he, but he also, I don't think can read Irma. Like he didn't know that Irma was a human and was lying about being a demon. So maybe he it doesn't work on humans, which would be interesting. But I don't know. Can't tell that. Um, so, you know, they all passed. So the boys decide they're going to do a group activity. They're going to go to a karaoke room and they're going to sing karaoke, which is an interesting decision. Um but yeah, they're all going to go do karaoke. Uh, and the thing I think that's very cute is the first song they sing is the theme from the first season of Welcome to Demon School. And I think that's a really fun choice uh, to sing that. They're just like, yeah, they're just like, yeah, of course, somehow they know that song. Uh, and they're all singing along and having a good time, um, which is which I just think is a funny, it's just like a funny choice to be like, oh, yeah, we're just... Uh, we just somehow know the, the theme to the first season. Um, and uh, Irma was supposed to go hang out with Amory, who is uh, the student council president. But instead, Clara comes by and goes, well, hey, come with me. So because the boys are all off doing karaoke, the girls in the Misfit class invite Amory to join them for girl talk. They have a girl hangout, which they've never done before. And in fact... Uh, Clara is the only girl that's ever talked uh, of these girls. There's only like three of them. So they only talked to Amory. So they invite her along, which is really nice. Um, and it's, a, it's like the first time we've seen them interact. So uh, Irma is nervous because 
uh, he's got to sing, and he doesn't know any uh, Netherworld songs, but he does know one song because towards the end of the first season, he had to help out and perform a song from an idol, which is called a demi doll, but it's just an idol. Um, uh, so he does perfect choreo uh, choreography and nails the song, and everyone's just like, "What? What just happened?" And they're just like, "Oh, I guess Irma really likes her. That that must just be. He must be a big fan of that idol." <laughs> But it just, yeah, it's a good little callback. I think that's great. Uh, and then the girl talk, um, they talk about relationships. And uh, um, it turns out that several of the girls are interested in Irma, or at least think that he's nice uh, and helpful, uh, which Omri is very surprised about and wonders if Clara is a rival with her. Uh, but then it's, it's unclear if Clara likes, like, Clara seems to like people who are nice, so maybe she doesn't, isn't, like, in love with him. Uh, but then they're like, well, imagine yourself getting married to him. And she's just like, and she gets, like, real embarrassed. Uh, so she's at least interested in the idea of getting married to Irma, uh, which was cute. Uh, and there's a big talk, and they're just getting the... They're just getting like loud or whatever, but they seem to have a good time doing it. Uh, they seem to to enjoy each other's company. They all exchange numbers at the end, so they to maybe do it again, which is just fun. And then Irma's like, "Oh, hey, sorry about that. I got distracted." And they're all like, "Get out of here! It's girl talk." And he's like, "I don't know what's happening." And that's the end of the episode. It's cute. Um, this is going to be, I believe, twenty episodes, and we're in episode twelve, so the show's continuing. And it's an ongoing, and I'll keep talking about it. I think we're going to get into the next arc. I imagine this was just like the end and like a, a little cute thing in between before we get into whatever's next. Um, which I assume is, uh, I, they might do their summer break stuff because it sounded like they were going to. So maybe Irma will finally go to a water park for the first time in his life. Of course, it'll be a netherworld water park, so it'll be messed up. Weird, but... Sounds like he's gonna have fun. I want him to have fun. It's a, it's a nice boy. He's one. He's just a, a plus nice boy. So, I want good things for that character. He deserves it. Uh, let's see. Got to put on this here. Um, and then I'll give you a brief overview of a show that uh ended its second season. Uh which is called Zombieland Saga. And the uh, second uh, season was called Revenge because it's it's the, them getting their revenge. Now, uh, this is a play on words. The use of saga is the story, is used in the story term, but also saga is a region of Japan where this show takes place in. Um, and they are, it is about zombies. Uh, this show, if you have not seen it, and I recommend it because I think it's very good, it is an idol show, and this is the idol show I like. This is it. I have never enjoyed idol shows before, and I don't know if I'll ever enjoy another one. This is my first time really liking an idol program um, because it's fucking weird. Because it's a bunch of girls who, some of whom were former idols uh, in the idol system in the 80s and 90s. One who was a, uh, a, a would-be but died before she could join a group and actually like become an idol uh and then one is like from the mejin era era and she was like a courtesan and uh and certainly like performed so she's a classic and then one who was like she hasn't fully become like a conscious zombie she's still a mindless zombie in a way but the bit that we understand about her is that she was in her time like a religious person that was like drawn people together and was like she was like the most famous woman of her time kind of a thing uh i guess but yeah so they're idols they're all zombies they all wear makeup to pretend uh and try to blend in and appear to be human uh because they are they are you know are, are alive i should say the human yeah and they it's this their struggles of trying to save saga bring saga to prominence um that is kind of the overall thing that they're trying to do uh, and become an incredible, well-known idol group. 
Uh, and there are twists and turns. Second season, you know, the first season ends with them, like, kind of blowing it. Really fucking up. Uh, uh, a big shot. A big opportunity they had. And so the second season is them, quote-unquote, getting their revenge. Getting, sho- shoving it in the face of the people that think that they, they're not good. And being like, no, we kick ass. Check us out. You, you doubted us, but we're going to blow you away. Um, okay, so, like this, all right, sorry, just getting this together, I don't want to fuck up the leg, we're moving to the left leg, we're making good progress on this, um, so anyway, uh, it's really weird, and I love it, I love Zombieland Saga, uh, the second season of Revenge, I think is great, they come across more problems, we see flashbacks, we, we learn how these characters die, uh, which is interesting to, to see, like, you know, to find out what their unfinished business is, to find out what they, uh, what their hopes and dreams were. Uh, people get solo songs and, and there's numbers, there's lots of musical numbers. There's a, It's CGI heavy and you know I generally don't like that, but because it's not fighting, because it's like, look, this show wouldn't exist if they couldn't have CGI dances. If they couldn't dance like that, then we wouldn't get this show. So I'm totally okay with that uh, as a means to an end. And it's, you know, it's the, it's the performances. And they're still good performances. The songs are really catchy. The, um, as I said, one of the characters doesn't speak. She just kind of growls. But the other girls sing. And they uh, they have traveled Japan and the region doing, like, promotional work. Like, doing the songs from the show. Uh, and I want to tell you that um, Saga is psyched about it. It is part of the phenomenon that happens where if an anime is really popular... It takes over the youth of Japan and influences them. And that happened with this show where people were traveling and seeing things. And it's a it's a love letter to the region. And the region responded. They really got behind this anime about uh, girls coming back from the dead uh, who love their region. Like, and I should also say one of whom, Lily, is trans. Uh... It, there's a trans idol girl in this show. Um, and while some of the characters are not the most sympathetic and understanding of, of what she is, overall it is a story of acceptance and of just being like, yeah, that's Lily. Lily is Lily. Um, uh, she's just working hard to make people happy. Uh, she just wants to put smiles on people's faces. She's a great girl. Uh, it's absolutely like lovely show about like finding finding your way and and not giving up and shooting for the stars and i want to say the last episode of season two which just aired this week um ended on a bang uh they gave it more time than normal it was 27 minutes instead of 24 it was commercial it was run without commercials in japan which is certainly not uh the norm and uh it had like yeah, it had a lot of fanfare, and the last episode is really strong and really great and ends on such a high note. And then the button of the show is so ridiculous, and I will not say what it is because it just happened, um, but it's so out there that if there isn't a season three, it's an inc- it's incredible. Like, it's an unbelievable way to end the series if they're not getting another season. And I have to imagine they are, but because like. But I'm like, did they just shoot themselves in the foot? Because how are they going to explain this moment in season two, like season three, if they have one? Like, how do you fucking explain this away? It's an unbelievably nonsensical, wonderfully weird moment. I don't know. I don't know how they do it. But uh, I would love to see them try. Uh, But anyway, that's Zombieland Saga. Uh, And the second season, which it just finished up, as I said, which was Zombieland Saga revenge they're getting their revenge on and it's it's just rap um i'm a huge fan of it uh i highly recommend like like if you're not an idol lover uh if you like idol shows then you gotta watch this one because it's great uh if you're not really into the idol style of show uh i think this one is different and weird enough that it will uh get you um it's just outlandish and weird. It has a lot of heart uh, and it is 
just one of the goofiest weird things I've ever seen. Um, so I'm a big, big fan of it. And that's the anime I want to talk about. Um, uh, I am watching Tokyo Revengers, which had its 12th episode, but apparently is a double length. They, they announced they are continuing the anime, like, directly. Um, but that had not been announced before. Uh, so people were speculating that it was just 12 episodes, but they had never really said. So it looks like it is more, which is cool because that show is pretty dope. Um, Tokyo Revengers is tough because it's a show that um, I really respect the choice it's made, but it doesn't make for experience a watching experience that I particularly love. Uh, a, a dude like had a really rough childhood that was a lot of his own fault, um, and he ran away from it. Um, and then he, in the modern day, or in, when he's like a young 20 something, uh, finds out that things have gone really bad for the people he knew back then. Um, and then he dies, he gets pushed in front of a train and dies. And then he wakes up back in his body in middle school. And right when, as his life was turning bad, uh, and he, through the course of finding out through another person that he has this connection with somebody else and he can travel back and forth through fixed periods of time. Uh, and he resolves to fix what happened to save his friends, particularly one of his best friends. Uh, and then also to save, you know, his girlfriend who dies in the present, he's going to make steps to fix shit. Um, and I think that's a really cool idea for a show and where it loses me, kind of, but I appreciate the loss, is he's not fucking good at it. Knowing the future doesn't help him fight gangs uh, because he's not strong. The future, knowing stuff, being a 22-year-old with knowledge of what happens, doesn't make him tougher than he is. Uh, it means that he doesn't want to give up. He has a, you know, he has a never-say-die attitude. But that's not the same as being physically strong. So it's really interesting. He's just like, oh, now I remember what happens here. This is the day I get my ass kicked. Okay, yeah. Uh, and there's nothing he can do about it because he can't prevent his own ass kicking. Uh, and I think that's really interesting. But that's not what I want to watch in a show. Like, I want to see... I want to see, like... I'm restarting my life at this time and now it kicks ass and that's just not the same program. And it maybe, maybe the version I'm talking about isn't good, but like, uh, there's going to be a redo show, um, about a guy that, uh, wishes he had gone to art school when he had opportunity and instead has a dead end job that then eventually the company closes and he, he just has nothing. And then he falls asleep and returns to, the, that moment to go the other way and i'm sure it doesn't work out perfectly but it's we're going to follow in it's a much lighter series not like an action series that's coming up this season and i am i think i'm much more interested in that but like i said i do respect um uh tokyo revengers also it's fucking called tokyo revengers which is just a kick-ass name for anything uh it's just a good name but i am uh, i am definitely interested in seeing where it goes because uh tokyo revengers I am watching, and it does have some twists and turns, and it did just, like, sort of be, like, episode 12. Uh, so, the art school one, I'm going to look up the name. I apologize, uh, words maybe. I don't remember, so I'm looking it up right now. Um, let's see here. Uh, we're going to go by uh, title, and then I'm going to go... Mm, nope. Nope. I'll call that. Okay, let me just scroll through real quick. Uh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, no, that's that's remake our life. It's called remake our life. It it uh, it airs next. Uh, sorry, in a week. Uh, it starts up. Um, I believe that's going to be a Crunchyroll show, if I remember correctly. Let's see if I can see that. It's called remake our life. Uh, the twenty eight year old game developer, when his company goes bankrupt and losing his job. Uh, he returns to his hometown. Looking at the success of creators of his age, he finds himself regretting his life decisions as he laid distress on his bed. Um, as Kyoka Kyoya wakes up, 
he discovers that he has traveled 10 years back in time before he entered college, will he be able to fully make things right? This is a story about a failed person who's given a second opportunity to follow his dreams. So yeah, uh, so that's not really going to be that action-y. It's a comedy based on a light novel. Um, and it looks like that's going to be on Crunchyroll, I believe. Um, uh, but yeah, Remake Our Life is what it's called. And I will be checking that out. Um... Sunny Boy looks like it might be interesting. Words maybe like, you know me, I'm going to watch the Isekais that come out. Um, the drugstore one looks pretty good. Uh, is an Isekai about a uh, a guy who gets, uh, you know, sent to that world. And he's like, uh, turns out I can make potions better than most people. I'm going to open up a pharmacy. And I was like, I don't know, that seems light and fun. So I'll be checking that out because that, that seems like it might be good. I mean, maybe it won't be. Um, that one will be fun. Second season of uh, Dragon Maid is coming out. I really like Dragon Maid, so I'll be watching that. Um, the Let's see, what else is coming out? Uh, the second half of the second season of The Time I Got Reincarnated the Slime is coming out. There's a lo Look, there's a lot of isekai. Uh, I'm going to watch most of them because I, I do like the subgenre. Um, the one that I'm like, about is... Black Company could be bad, could be good. So I'm like, I'll give it, I'll give Black Company a shot because I, I like the the premise of a guy, a lazy guy, uh, who gets reincarnated, or he gets trans sent to another world, uh, to basically, uh, like, work with no money. Um, oh, the PA. So the PA work show about working in an aquarium. Yeah, that does sound cool. That's the closest thing we're getting to a bunch of girls really into a thing anime we're not getting that this season um last season uh we had let's make a mug which was and and super cub to an extent but super cub wasn't quite that um but yeah we don't really have the a bunch of girls are together and really like a thing uh kind of show this season so i am interested in, in this coming season so i am interested in checking out that aquarium show because i think there's like that's a that's a fun premise as a, a, a girl who washes out of being an idol, but doesn't want to go back home. She's failed. She meets a teenager who uh, is try who's been, whose life's mission is to try to save this small aquarium. That's going, that's going to go out of business. So they have like this one summer to basically like work in the aquarium and save it. Uh, and that just seems like a cool little show. It's like a girl who's given up on her dream or failed in her dream uh, in basically like accepting someone else's dream and deciding to work on that, uh, which I just think is a neat premise for a show. Uh, as long as the characters are fun. But I like PA works as well. So yeah, I think that that could be great. Uh, Mappos put out an action series. I forget the name of it. It's got like deities or idol something or other in it i can't remember the name of it uh you know i haven't memorized all the names but mappa's great and they're putting out a show about at a certain point there were demons showing up and so the gods came down some of the gods came down to fight them and then the demons got beaten and the gods stayed and had children and then demons showed up again but now the gods are like the gods that are there are like we really don't know how to fight we're kind of forgotten so they have to like remember what they need to do um and it just lo it looks pretty fucking neat so at least i'm least gonna give that an episode because that does seem pretty cool like it could be cool i don't know for sure um oh man we're definitely gonna finish this on monday on monday we will finish this kit which is fine but because we did a leg here because there's not much weapons here there's like a couple little weapons and we just got to do a leg, so I'll know on Monday what else I'm going to be building. Let me actually just see. Check out my Patreon, see if my $10 patrons have voted on what they'd like me to build next. Maybe, maybe, oops. 
Last Brick to subscribe, double roll, doubles, roll again, uh, which is because Last Brick has subscribed for 44 months. Thank you so much, Last Brick. Thank you for your continued support. Let's throw the barricade, the leg of the scythe, the moat, and thank Last Brick for their continued support here. 40 more months is ridiculous. Uh, right now, the Gundam 00 Diver from Gundam uh, Build Divers is winning. Uh, and that kit looks like this. As you can see, it's got those GN drives on its fucking shoulders, which is nonsense. And it's got two gun knives or gun swords. Swords that in one, you hold it one way, it's a sword. You hold it the other way, it's a gun. That doesn't make no sense, but it's great. Uh, that's so that probably wouldn't be able to be able next. Godzilla Singular Point just had it, the its international release on Netflix. I haven't had time to uh, to have a look though. Says Ash. Also, hey Ash, welcome. Yeah, I am. Um, I haven't watched that yet. Uh, Ian uh, Horner, who is going to be on my uh, Anime Club panel, ha it says real good things about it. Um, but as I said, I have not seen it yet, but I have heard uh, very good things. So I, I look forward to checking that out. Um, uh, because, like I said, uh, it, it comes recommended. Uh, yeah, I, I got real burnt on anime on... Because I watched two episodes of Record of Ragnarok, which is just awful. Holy shit, that's bad. That is like A-level garbage uh, over on uh, uh, over on the Netflix. Uh, like Godzilla, it sure is written by a guy with a lot of degrees in scientific fields. Okay, words maybe. All right, it's a science show. A lot of theories, I assume. Um, but yeah, Record of Ragnarok is bad. Uh uh, I like the premise of Yashire. I didn't like the execution of Yashire. Um, and uh, look, some people thought that Way of the House Husband was good. They were like, it's like a motion comic come to life. And to that I say, I don't like it. But also, uh, people were like, well, uh, well, the direct look, the mangaka really likes it and liked the art style choice and was excited about it. And I'm like, yeah, just because he made it doesn't mean he's right. He makes manga. Maybe he doesn't know what a good anime looks like. I, I don't care if he liked it. I'm the one watching it. And I think Way the House Husband is a is look, making it a weird motion comic was a bad choice. I think they fucked up. They made a thing that I don't like. And like, okay, I don't have to like it, but I don't like it. Uh, I'm glad he likes it. Um, there's supposed to be uh, uh, a trailer for Mappa's Chainsaw Man anime like Tonight or Tomorrow. Ooh, okay. Oh, that's yeah, yeah, yeah Chainsaw Man. Uh, I don't know. I don't have a problem with Mappa with the work they've been doing lately. I think they've made some good stuff. What's the name of that one that I want to check out? I'm gonna really quickly. I'm gonna really check quickly, find the name of the show that Mappa's doing that I thought looked good. Let's see. Oh, they're well. Mappa's doing Remain, which. I'm not going to watch Remain because it's about um, uh, a men's water polo team. And I, that just doesn't appeal to me. Uh, what else are they doing? They're not doing anything else? I thought they were doing that other one. I thought for sure. Oh, Madhouse is doing Sunny Boy. That's a good. I didn't realize they were doing that. Case Study of Anitas could be good. Okay. The Idaton Deities Only Know Peace is being made by Mappa. Uh, that looks like it could be cool. Um, the case study of Vanitas is by Bones, and that could be good as well. Uh, more so just means how horrendous they've gotten with overwork. Yeah, they take on a lot of projects. Uh, Crimson says, my issue with the notion of he's a manga creator, he doesn't know what good his anime is. Look at the most popular anime, Bleach, Naruto, Inuyasha, My Hero Academia. Just a few were based off the mangas. Crimson, I'm not saying that manga adaptations, my point is, just because the person that created the manga thinks the anime adaptation is good, 
doesn't mean it's a good anime adaptation. That's the defense people are using to defend Way of the House, Bus House Husband, a thing I think is bad, by saying, well, the mangaka likes it. It doesn't matter to me that the mangaka likes it. It sucks when the mangaka doesn't like it, when they don't like the anime adaptation that they're watching. But I still think that that person's tastes don't line up with mine. I like the manga they made. I don't like the anime that got produced of the manga I like, is what I'm saying. So to me, it doesn't matter that, like, it, to me, it's not a, a compelling argument. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, to me, it's not a compelling argument that they're like, that when people are like, um, yeah, well, because, like, there are bad anime adaptations all the time. Like, I did a video on that not too long ago. Like, uh, for a variety of reasons. And they come in a lot of reasons. Sometimes it's the animation studio just doesn't have the the time or energy that or the budget to pull it off. Sometimes they make a big choice and it doesn't, you know, work. Sometimes they are, like, uh with uh, 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 Promised Neverland. Promised Neverland, the manga goes in a different direction than the first, the first like big arc. And the, uh, the producers of the anime were like, oh no, people fell in love with this like story and this like suspense thriller. That's not what the, the manga continues to be. Let's just, instead of doing something we think people won't like, which is t accurately portraying this manga that's coming out, let's instead skip a bunch of stuff to get to a thing that's the closest to what the first season felt like. And then you have a lot of people going, they ruined it. And then you have people who are like, don't know that that happened to the manga, just going, this seems, this didn't seem great. Um, you know, there's all kinds of ways that can it can fuck up. Or like, what if you're you've got a multi-season anime uh and uh but i can still hear you enough to understand what you're saying okay no problem kinzen uh that's cool um or you have something like uh a, a thing i point out all the time is um they shouldn't have put out a fifth season of food wars because the the stuff they were adapting was it well received or liked like the last manga arc people didn't love so but but they were gonna put it out no matter what and it was like maybe you shouldn't because it's not great so it was like they were they were never gonna win because they didn't change it they just did it uh, which is why that fifth season is just one like 13 episode arc instead of like 24 to 26 because they were like Ugh, what are we gonna do? It's not this. This is not what people are gonna. You know, people aren't gonna respond well to it because the people that were reading the manga didn't respond well to it. It's just like yikes. Uh, I feel that Food Wars lost steam long before that. So Ash, I don't disagree with you. I to me, to me, the fourth, the, the first half of the fourth season or the fourth plate, as they call it, the first half of the fourth plate, I don't think is that strong. It's kind of meandering. I think it picks up really well um, by the second uh, uh, part of it. Uh, where, okay. The uh, the second half, when we get into the, the group competitions and leading up to that, I think that's way stronger and way more interesting. But also that, to me, season four ends, the way season four ends, you could just end the anime right there and you'd be happy. You're like, you're... The top of the Elite Ten, you're the director of the school. You, you put in a little coda about maybe them uh, sort of falling in love, with, but you don't have to do that, which they still fucking do in the, in the fifth season. You don't have to do that shit. You can just be like, you can just end it there. And people are like, you're going to run the school. The end. And people would have been like, cool. And instead they were like, no, we got to tie up some loose ends. We got all these dangling stories. We got to introduce a character. Uh, we finally got to introduce the, the big bad, who is terrible. I mean, there's a lot of problems with season five, the fifth plate. There's a lot of problems. Mostly that it sets up a bunch of loser characters that I'm like, none of these people are going to be a problem. What are we even doing here? But they're like, 
we got to reveal that all of this was a plan all along. This was all, this was all, all of the events that happened in the show were all the plan of, of the main, one of the main characters, grandfather. And you're like, oh, it was his master plan all along. And you're like, okay, sure it was. Sure. I don't know. That to me was always just like, they really, I don't know. I don't remember where I stopped. I like season one the most when I saw. Yeah, I mean, um, I think I really liked season three because uh, I really enjoyed a lot of those characters uh, that came through. And it was playful in a way that I enjoyed. Um, but season two, I think is strong enough. Uh, it's just mostly that season uh, four just has a strong enough conclusion. And they could have just ended it there, but instead they had to put out the manga that didn't need to continue. Uh, all right, well, we got so much of this kit done. We are going to call it there. Um, uh, thank you all so much for being here. We are going to go and raid another stream because that is the thing we do around here. The old Bill Wood Bear is that we, uh, we go and raid and uh, send some love to another streamer. So we're going to go see who else is out there doing stuff just get this going here um so i'm gonna go see who we can go raid um saturday night it seems like every saturday we're raiding wiggins because that is a person on my list who is uh playing stuff uh, uh wiggins is playing mass effect 3 so we're gonna go give him a raid uh because he's been playing through the mass effect mass effect collection uh so we'll go give uh matt wiggins a raid great dude great little community so let's go hang out with him um so feel free to come along this raid my next stream will be monday 9 p.m eastern where i will finish this kit and start a new one uh it will either be the gundam double o or it will be uh this uh car two cars the uh, so I'm not sure what they'll be, but one of those two will be the next thing we build. But let's go on this raid. Thanks so much for being here. I hope you have a great rest of your evening. Um, thanks for being uh, uh, in stream. Thanks for being in chat. Thanks for uh, renewing your subscriptions and following and hanging out. Uh, I'll see you all in the next one. Have a great night, everybody. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. Raid, raid, raid.